All right, everyone. Uh, we're going to get our lightning talks started right now. Uh, we have John Bog Bogovic, <laughs> and uh, to kick us off with a extended lightning talk. So thanks for, for being here and looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, Mark. Um, yep. So I'll be talking today about an n-dimensional thin plate spline implementation in Java. Um, so first, so that we're all on the same page, um, we're using this for image transformations and image alignment. So um, what do I mean by that exactly and how do we use it? Well, suppose we have an image and we want to align it with something else. So here's the baptistry in Pisa and say we want to align it with, I don't know, Mammy's Cupboard Restaurant. Um, one thing we might want to do is you find a landmark in the moving image and its corresponding point on the fixed or target image. And if you do this a bunch of times, um, it's clear that you, you might want to find a warp that takes the points from the moving image to their corresponding points in the target image. Uh, and you just want to find some kind of warp that does that, like this one. Um, and it's sort of clear what you want to do at the landmarks, but maybe less clear how you want to warp the points that are in between or far away from the landmarks. Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, one of them is called the thin plate spline. It's been popular for a long time and successful in a lot of domains. Um, as might be clear, it's a landmark-based warped, and the uh, landmarks are aligned exactly after passing through this deformation. Um, it's based on a physical model of a thin metal sheet, uh, and once you place a pair of correspondences, that's going to fix um, the position of part of this metal sheet, and then it's going to bend in a certain way that minimizes the amount of bending that happens, and the shape that it takes is going to interpolate that warp everywhere. Um, it's appealing in, for a couple of reasons. One, there's no parameters that you have to tune, and also the solution is closed form, um, and it can be computed pretty efficiently and pretty quickly as a result. Um, if you want details, check out Bookstein and Davis et al. Um, the initial um, descriptions of the thin plate spline were all two-dimensional, but in fact, um, you can implement it in an n-dimensional way. And in fact, that's how the folks at ITK implemented it. And so we ported that to Java, which is nice because it's easily integratable into Fiji and ImageJ and all, all of this kind of stuff. Uh, it's available as an open source library at solfeldlab slash JITKTPS. Um, uh, so I'll also talk a little bit about a tool that we've we've made that uses this. Uh, we're calling it Big Warp for now, and it's based on another cool tool uh, called Big Data Viewer. Um, and as such, it can handle really huge data sets. And I'll be showing you that in a little bit. And you can find that also at on GitHub at solfeldlab slash Big Warp. Um, a little bit of credit before I move on. Um, as I mentioned, the, the, our implementation is based on ITK. Um, we're using EJML for a lot of the linear algebra, ImageLib2 for image and transformation related stuff, um, Big Data Viewer, of course, and Mamut, which is a manual tracking tool by Jean Yves Tenetas, which was a really big inspiration for Big Warp, uh, and as well uh, MPICBG, Tracky M2, and Fiji, which we're integrating and using a lot. Uh, and now, because I live on the edge, I'm going to give you guys a live demo. So let's see. All right, great. So here I just have ImageJ open with a couple of images. These are serial sections, 2D, of uh, WrapBrain um, with a couple of different staining protocols. So um, this is not in Fiji yet, but it will be soon. And when it is, you'll be able to find it under Plugins, Big Data Viewer, Big Warp. So you do that. It just lets you decide which image is going to be moving and which one is going to be fixed. Um, we'll leave it as is. You say OK, and it's going to open up a couple of other windows, which are just the same kind of things, except these let you navigate a little bit. All right, good. This is responsive enough. Um, I'm going to use a ton of hotkeys. Um, and I'm not going to talk about any of them, except to say that if you hit F1, a nice help page comes up, and you can, you can check those out. Um, and the other important one is, uh, so spacebar enters what we're calling landmark mode. So you just kind of toggle it as you will. And in landmark mode, you can click to drop landmarks like so, for instance. And hopefully you can see that. I'm just going to drop a couple. And now, uh, it ha as it's using Big Data Viewer, it has a lot of nice features. So for example, you can overlay the images like so. Uh, and here you can see, for instance, uh, these dark structures, the ventricles aren't aligned very well. I mean, the images aren't very aligned in general. So I'll drop corresponding landmarks on this image as well. Um, notice that that table is being populated. And I have to 
add them in the same order that I added them originally because the points are, have to be in correspondence. So now we can estimate a warp. You might have seen that that changed, but I'll zoom in and I'll toggle. So here's original, here's warped, here's original, here's warped. And you can see that the landmarks get warped nicely. Um, you know, it does its best to interpolate, but it's not going to be perfect. Um, now I'm just going to load quickly some landmarks that I've done earlier. We'll re-estimate this guy, and now you can see it's kind of better everywhere. Um, I'm, uh, let's see. I'm also going to show you a nice way you can add points, which is if you sort of shift, click, and drag, um, this adds a pair of landmarks and sort of um, it sort of says move the point of the initial click to the point of the release. So here's another example, a really big one like that. And you can see that the warp here is pretty extreme. Um, we've also added some sugar for visualiz visualizing what the warp looks like. For example, here's a grid that shows you know, roughly what, what the warp looks like. And hopefully you can appreciate that even though the you know, deformation is pretty big, it's uh, quite smooth still. Um, another nice thing that we've looked at is comparing to a pretty simple transformation. OK. So for instance, here what you're seeing is um, where it's bright red is where uh, the warp is very different from a rigid transformation. And as you'd expect, where the deformation is huge, um, the difference between this warp and a rigid is very large. Um, we can deactivate that point, for instance, and now you see that the whole transformation is pretty similar to a rigid. Um, another nice feature is that since we're actually living inside of ImageJ here, we can export to an Image Plus. So now it's going to take this warped image in just a second, pop up another version of it, and you can now use this as you would any other image inside of Fiji. You can save it, you can analyze it, you can do whatever ever else you'd like. Um, and now I'm going to show you one other example, except this here in 3D. Hopefully it's here. Yes, it is. Um, so this is exactly the same thin plate spline code. Um, and it's also using Big Data Viewer. And here we're uh, going to try to align this template on the left, which is some light microscopy, um, and here are some calcium image data. And you can see that the calcium images uh, is a lot smaller. I mean, it has a much smaller field of view, and sort of different things are evident. Uh, if I overlay, you can see that um, you know they're not aligned now. We're interested in aligning. You can see my cursor, right? Yes. We're interested in aligning this, for instance, and this arch to this arch. Um, I've already added a bunch of points, so I'm going to just transform it. And you can see that it does a pretty good job. Um, we're using Big Data Viewer, as I said, for visualization, which is nice because we can do sort of arbitrary slices of this. Um, you can see um, here is a Z plane. I'm scrolling in Z now. Um, I can just rotate this to some other orientations to have a quick look. Um, and as well, um, all of the point placement tools that I described in 2D work here. So for instance, we can do something a little crazy and do that. We can do this, for instance. Um, all the same tools work uh, just, as I, just as they did before. Um, and here, you can also export to an image plus. So I'm going to get that started. That'll take a minute. And while that's going, I'm just going to hop back here to thank some folks. Maybe, maybe. All right, so uh, first I'd like to thank Stefan Saalfeld, who's the head of my lab, and to BSP, who together did Big Data Viewer and helped me a lot with this. Philip Henslowski, who's a member of my lab and gave me a lot of helpful feedback. Alan Wong, who gave me the 3D data that I showed. Crystal Sullivan, our lab coordinator, who helps make everything happen. And John Easton Nevis, who wrote Mammut, as I mentioned, which was a huge inspiration for this tool. And uh, I'd like to thank you and invite any questions. It's it's uh, started out as a port from ITK's code. Yep. Is there a way to find some CDF points out of everybody? There are a lot of ways to do that. 
Um, this code doesn't think about that. It assumes you have points to start with. Um, but there are some points, uh, some ways to find similar points automatically, yes. And some of which are in Fiji already. Huh? In 3D too, yeah. Um, so there's something called SIFT, SIFT correspondences, which is in Fiji, um, and a couple of others that we can talk. I can show you if you're interested. Cool. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>